in his time in his time he makes all things beautiful in his time Lord please show me every day as you're teaching me your way that you do just what you say in your time in your time in your time you make all things beautiful in your my life to you I bring may each song I have to sing be it to you a lovely thing in your time Lord please show you do just what you say in your time We gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came As we gather may your spirit walk within us As we gather may we glorify your name Knowing well that there's so hard begin to worship We'll be blessed because we came We'll be blessed because we came As we gather may your spirit work within us As we gather may we glorify your name Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship We'll be blessed because we came We'll be blessed because we came Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship We'll be blessed
just because we came We'll be blessed because we came I see, I see. It's good to see you all. Uh, we are in a series called Begin Again as we uh, start New Year 2021. Uh, we've been looking at the part of uh, the passage where uh, Israelites finally taking off from Egypt, where they served as slaves for a very long time. Uh, there are a number, numerous miracles happen for this to happen. And finally, the day has come and they are just getting themselves ready to leave, uh, go to the, the promised land. Uh, so that scene, we looked at it last week and we, throughout the month, we are going to see that story just uh, part by part. So that, uh, we, as we start this new year, a very strange new year, the new year we are starting in pandemic. Uh, and I think there are things that we can learn from the story of Israelites' departure from Egypt. So let's jump into the text. Today's passage is the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 31 to 42. Uh, we're going to look at the same passage all four Sundays. And uh, we'll, like I said, we'll see how God prepared the Israelites for their departure. Uh, so here we go. During the night, Pharaoh summoned, uh, summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as you have said, and go and also bless me. 
The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country, for otherwise, they said, we will all die. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried it on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and they gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. The Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Sakoth. There were about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. Many other people went up with them, and also large droves of livestock, both flocks and herds. With the dough the Israelites had brought from Egypt, they baked loaves of unleavened bread. The dough was without yeast because they had been driven out of Egypt and did not have time to prepare food for themselves. Now the length of time the Israelites, Israelite people lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of 430 years to the very day, all the Lord's divisions left Egypt. Because the Lord kept vigil that night to bring them out of Egypt, on this night uh, all the Israelites are to keep vigil to honor, honor the Lord for the generations to come. Uh, lately I saw the very funny Twitter about the um, observation a person made about squirrels. I don't know if you like squirrels, uh, but squirrels like here and there, right? especially in states you can see them like if in the suburban area or if you go you know any more nature like places you can find squirrels very often and even in Korea uh, we can find them here and there in Daejeon too but this guy made a Twitter about basically saying whatever squirrel jumps or falls they when they land uh, any of those cases squirrels make very interesting uh, gesture which is uh, squirrels land like, jump like, fall like uh, a superhero. So here's Twitter. <laughs> yeah, don't they don't they jump or land like squirrel uh, superheroes? <laughs> I didn't really know that. Really, this photo made me laugh. As we start this new year, 2021, uh, this is like totally different uh, new year we never experienced before. Obviously, a 2020 was. I mean, something we never expected. And 2021, as we start this new year, we are starting it in pandemic situation. And this is something you know, we never experienced before. And as we start this new journey of new year, we are a little nervous, a little shaky. We're so uncertain about what to come. And as I said earlier, we were looking at this story of Israelites leaving uh, Egypt. Uh, and I think they are taking a very unexpected journey too. And uh, when we are in this unexpected process of our lives, uh, we do have this expectation uh, as a Christians for our as, as God's people for our God to work uh, in a more like superhero way. The problems that we struggle with in our lives, the difficulties that we go through, we pray and we want, we expect our God to just take care of them in a more like a superhero way so that we can just say farewell to those problems and issues and just see clearly how God works you know, in our lives. But yet, God sometimes works in more subtle ways, more like you really got to pay attention to it ways. Uh, if you look at today's passage, uh, Israelites are they like they're in a hurry? They gotta go. Like they really didn't like last week. I shared that a little bit. They didn't really know expect this day to come. Finally, the day is here, and they're like packing and hurry. And there's one thing they kind of did unusually, which is they, according to the Bible, I'll just let me read the passage for you. Uh, if you look at uh, 33, verse 33, it goes like this. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country. The Egyptians had it. Like, they are, like, <laughs> sick of Israelite. Like, they had enough uh, flags and this, this amazing, seen enough miracles. They just want Israelites to leave. And they go, 
uh, for otherwise they say we will die. We all uh, we will all die. So the people took their dough before the east it was added and carried it on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. The Israelites in a hurry. They're like packing up. They're ready to go. Then this is the unusual thing the Israelites did, which is the Israelites did as Moses instructed, and this is something uh, that they did according to the this, uh, the, the direction. Uh, guideline they got from Moses, their leader. Uh, and this is what happened. Uh, uh, ask the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. They're asking Egyptians who, like I said, are tired, sick of having Israelites there. They're asking them to give their jewelry, <laughs> their valuables. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and they gave them what they asked for. And the Egyptians actually gave their valuables, gave their jewelry to Israelites like a goodbye gift. So they uh, literally plundered the Egyptians. Ah, I'm like, I mean, you must be the thinking the same thing that I'm thinking, Israelites. Is it, is it isn't like too much? Is it, aren't they too mean? Now they're like they're getting their freedom. They're finally you know okay to go, and you are asking for jewelry, you're asking for like valuables. Like you're like <laughs> robbing me. I mean, if I'm Egyptian, right? Anyway, and we feel like ah, oh, that's too much. But if you look at the Bible. Uh, all these ha things happen in the later, from middle to later part of the book of Exodus. This is a basically fulfillment of what God said to Moses uh, in chapter 3 of Exodus. Uh, and even this little action was promised by God. If you look at uh, Exodus chapter 3, uh, verse 18, it goes like this. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, had met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. So basically, this is what I mean, God is uh, speaking this to Moses. You're going to do this, and this will happen. Okay? And, uh, but I know that the king of Egypt will not list, uh, let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So God knew this too, and God actually uh, kind of uh, gave this information uh, to Moses. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. So God, what God said to uh, Moses happened. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people so that when you leave you will not go empty-handed every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing which you will put on your sons and daughters and so you will plunder literally plunder the egyptians so basically what happened here is that god foresaw I mean, he obviously knew what's going to happen. He told Moses, you know what? When you go, don't go empty-handed. Ask Egyptians to give you guys something. And uh, Israelites just followed that order. It was God's promise, and he fulfilled that promise because our God is faithful God. Uh, you know, uh, facing this new year, 2021, uh, many things in your life, my life, our lives, look very shaky, uncertain, and very unpredictable. We don't know what to come and when something's gonna happen, you know, what, when, how, why. Well, have everything so, seems so blurry. I mean, our lives obviously have been so unpredictable all along, but this year, like last year, it even looks more blurry. Uh, and even just living, uh, just, just before we start this walk, uh, through this new journey of 2021, what should we really remember then? We gotta remember that our God is faithful. Even that little promise God made through Moses to Israelites, He kept that. You ask for, you know, some uh, silver, gold, clothing uh, from Egyptians, and they will not 
give you those. You will not go empty-handed. He made a promise and he kept that promise. Even that little promise. Uh, our God is faithful God. What does it really mean? It means he keeps what he said. It actually means our God is faithful. Our God is working to achieve, to fulfill what he, with the plan he has for us. Living in the shaky era, just walking through this uncertain path, everything looks so uncertain, but our God's faithfulness is certain. Maybe that's the foundation we have to start from with this new journey, while everything else looks so uncertain. Uh, <laughs> lately, I heard a very funny, interesting story. Uh, in Pennsylvania, there's a little town, I forgot the name of the town, and there's a robbery, okay? And the, uh, the police in the town, police department, they were just looking out, just trying to uh, uh, find uh, you know, the, the person who did it. And they found a witness who saw the, the person, uh, who, uh, the robber, and they kind of heard what, how, what it looked like. And they actually drew very just interesting kind of cartoonish uh, uh, sketch of the suspect. And though it looks so funny, uh, I'll, let me show you the, the sketch. It looked like this. I know, I know. It, it doesn't look like the real person at all, right? It looks so cartoonish. Yeah, this is the sketch they got from the witness. So they put that on social network, social media, like I think Facebook or something. And then so many people kind of like mocking, <laughs> like making fun, funny, uh, funny statements. Like, oh, my roommate, I think that's my roommate. My roommate look, used to look like that. I mean, my roommate looked like that when I was from my college or like my brother looked like that. And they were kind of making fun of that, picking on that uh, sketch, which was posted on the uh, Pennsylvania Police Department on uh, Facebook. <laughs> Amazingly enough, Somebody actually saw that sketch and made a report to police department saying, I think I know who that is. And amazingly, uh, the police found that person and that was the robber who robbed the supermarket. And it was so amazing. And I think uh, what we do as uh, believers, uh, as God's people, I, I think we do the same thing. We do certain things. We see our life, okay? We see our job. We see our, our family. We see our church. We see what's going on in this world. We see our what things happening in our lives. We see what, what's happening in year, New Year 2021. But we believe that what we see on the surface is not everything. What we believe is, though that's the thing that I see, it looks so uncertain, it looks so unpredictable, it looks so shaky, we see something beyond the surface. We see that God's faithfulness, like the, the witness, the person who may report to the police department, though he saw that funny cartoonish sketch, he actually saw uh, the actual robber from that sketch. What we do is we look at all the, this, those things happening in our life. We still see that this is not everything. Beyond all these, our God is faithful and His faithful, faithfulness never stopped. And He's still working for me. He has planned for me. This is something we can hang on to. This is something that's the foundation we can actually stand on. This a very shaky, uh, unstable, uh, unpredictable New Year 2021. I mean, if you think about it, look back in your life. There are obviously moments you feel uncertain. There are moments you feel like this is the end of the world. There are moments that you feel like your life is so miserable. Yet, yet, you remember that. You remember that maybe all those things really didn't turn out to be you know, in the, the, the way that you want them to be, yet there are marks, there are footprints. God was walking with you. There was not even a single moment God never, you know, pro, God, God didn't provide for you. There was never a single moment God was not present 
with you. If you look back, you know that. You remember that. That's why throughout the Bible, whenever God appears to His people, He reminds His people what He's done previously. He's saying, hey, I'm the God. I'm God of Abraham. I'm God of Isaac. I'm God of Jacob. I'm the God who brought you out of Egypt. You see, look back. I've been faithful to you. I want you to rely on my faithfulness. Maybe this is something we have to remember. God, our God keeps His promise. Our God is faithful. God, even biggest scale to the very smallest scale is that kind of God. Then how do we know that He is faithful? We have to see His heart. If you see just what's happening, it's hard to find His faithfulness. Yet we find His heart for us. We find His love for us. Uh, last year, 20, year 2020, I mean, we all know it was, it was tough with uh, this COVID-19 and everything. And schools were shut down for like many days too. And I, I saw this news article. Uh, it was a very interesting article. Uh, there was a school that was closed for like quite a long time. And then the, the new cases went low a little bit. And then school reopened. So students, I think it was elementary school, kind of started, started attending the going to school again. And it was the first day. And in Korean schools, they have this green mothers. And what green mothers do is they basically, when the school, uh, uh, elementary school kids go to go to school there's some you know uh, crosswalks kind of dangerous right so what they do is they carry little green flags and they stop the cars so that this elementary school kids can cross the crosswalk safely so as the the kids started going to school again it was uh, Korean mothers uh, it was their duty <laughs> to do this again but one of the mothers actually came up with the idea, which is, you know, since the kids they haven't been able to go to school for a while, they, you know, she kind of wanted to, uh, kind of, you know, encourage the kids. So she was thinking, what can I do? What can I do? And it was her turn to do that green mother's volunteer work. So, and she was a big Star Wars fan. <laughs> And she had this costume, Star Wars costume, and she put that on and she asked some other Star Wars fan, Green Mothers, and they actually put their Star Wars costume too. So the first day of the school, since long break, uh, from the long break of the, the COVID-19, these Green Mothers were all wearing Star Wars costume and helping the kids to walk across the street. And I got some photos, here they are. Uh, they are awesome. Darth Vader, making sure you're you're not jaywalking. <laughs> shh, shh, walk now. Shh, shh, go now. Shh, shh, stop you cars. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was really interesting. But I mean, obviously, why are these mothers doing this? because they have this Star Wars costume and they really want to use them sometime. Primary purpose, uh, goal, yes. Well, but in addition to that, what we can see is these mothers wanted to, you know, uh, wanted to encourage the kids. They want the students to see that they are there for them. So even that little funny, uh, that Star Wars thing kind of make us actually feel, oh, that's very nice, and our heart feel warm. Right, even the little kids too. Uh, throughout the Bible, God actually has these kind of signs it's everywhere. You know, basically from beginning to the end, God is saying, you know what? I love you. Here's my heart for you. This is my love for you. From the beginning to the end, throughout the Bible, God just consistently, repeatedly show that to us and say, I'm, I love you this much. How can I not be? How can I not be faithful to you? How can I just leave you alone there in an uncertain situation? I love you so much. I have to be faithful to you. I have to be walking with you. This journey you're taking, it looks strange. It looks so new. Yet, I'm not going to let you walk that journey alone. I cannot just do that because my love for you is so great. We can find the proof of that love throughout the Bible. And 
the climax, the highlighting uh, proof of that love is that cross. God never minded, never minded coming to this earth as a human like you and me. He also took the journey. It was a new journey. And in the end of the journey, he took the cross. He didn't mind getting uh, humiliated, getting, getting tortured, getting murdered on that tree. And all that is there, happened. Why? So that we can see God's heart, His love for us. As we start this new year, 2021, may not be easy. It may be very troubling too. A lot of frustrations waiting for you and me. Yet, God's faithfulness still there. God's love for us still there. Even from the very smallest scale to the biggest scale, His love, His faithfulness is everywhere. And I want you to hold on to it. I want you to take that as your rock, as your foundation, as we start this new year. Let's pray. Father God, you're awesome God. Uh, as we start this new year, uh, I think we need more courage. We need more faith. We need more, I don't know, a more fresh start. But it's hard. Yeah, we can see that you've been faithful to Israelites. They were taking their little jewelries. They, you were making sure Israelites leaving Egypt, not empty-handed. Because you prepare them, you prepare their journey. And we know that your faithfulness for us is the same. Uh, please help us to see beyond what we see. Help us to find your faithfulness beyond our doubt. Help us uh, to find your guidance uh, beyond our, our frustration. And help us, and above all, help us to find your heart, your love, your cross, your sacrifice. And from there, we can find new strength to take another step in our journey. You're awesome, God. Thank you. And you're faithful, God. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen.